ray of sunshine <laughs> from the pow revolution thank y'all for stopping by my channel where you become the light that sparks prophetic joy all over the world woo, woo, woo. and what is prophetic joy it's the power of the holy spirit the power in your mouth to speak life to speak healing to speak abundance through the the unction of the holy spirit and joy and gratitude for your life but it's so much more than that it's releasing yourself from bondages fears traumas and it's taking up the mantle the anointing of the joy of gladness the the anointing of the holy spirit the power of long life and riches that is in her hands so i'm really really excited woo -woo, to be here today back in the saddle again yes i am and i am teaching you today about ruth and boaz and what that means um, concerning how to manifest abundance and and prosperity in in love even love in your life how to sustain it how to maintain it how to gain it all right come through y'all what what <laughs> let's do it so you know honestly I was driving in my car right over there right over yonder yes I have a little key so I was driving in my car and you know the word of the lord just it just god just spoke to my spirit because i was kind of looking at my own circumstances and looking at where i am right now in my life and i kind of compared it to ruth so god put a vision within me that i really want to fulfill and that is the power revolution the prophetic joy revolution being an ambassador for christ you know spreading the love the joy the peace the abundance the healing of god through the power of prophetic joy is my true purpose on this earth it's what i was born it was what i was crafted and created with great care and great guidance to do from from a little child on up okay and so and i was very aware of my purpose and i may not have had a name for it that's okay but i knew that i had a strong purpose on this earth to fulfill god's call and anointing and the mantle that he has placed on me in his kingdom i just find it trying to find out what it is and so just like ruth right i went through some trials and some tribulations i went through a desert season where there were there was like the people that i love the relationship the marriage died okay where uh jobs that i thought i i would have forever that would prosper me it died okay um the place that i want that i you know i had dreamed to live in i got there and i found out it wasn't so great after all and it became a barren wasteland of hopelessness and desolation for me there were placed parts in my life you know my own ego my own pride my you know areas of growth in 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 just the trajectory of you know my life as i began walking towards my purpose that also had to die right i mean we are new creatures in christ are we not and so therefore there are areas in our life that have to die so that we can gain um the inheritance and the promise that god has provided for us through christ jesus so yeah there were things in my life in my past that i had to go through that had to die there was pagan idolatry that had to die there was um you know worshiping money greed living uh that fast life having a uh, sugar daddies or whatever it is you want to say you know struggling as a single mom or even having that thought that i can't do this alone that had to die okay um <laughs> i got some st strength in that one didn't i yeah uh just um you know there were there were you know immoralities and all kinds of things that we all go through right um belief in sickness belief that we can't make it belief that we can't do what we set our our hearts to do past traumas from rape that I experienced as a child growing up and even on to adulthood, being uh, beaten and abused by my ex-husband's divorce, you know, grappling with obesity and everything. Those things in my life I had to go through, I had to suffer through, I was shamed for in many circumstances and that shame 
that um, fear that was impeding me from moving forward to grabbing hold of the promise like Ruth grabbed hold of the promise with Naomi and said, wherever you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. I had to get that, that momentum. I had to gain that same desire and that same covenant relationship with Christ within myself with the sorry my camera stopped for a minute but with the purpose and the spirit of God you know the Holy Spirit power within myself I had to move forward with that strength and belief that through the wound the the tomb experience of the death, the desolation, the trauma, the and, and and the heartache and the heartbreak that I endured through divorces and and uh, promiscuity and um, abuse and 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 rape and, and 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 sickness in my body and all of those things that depression, anxiety, all those things that I had to let die off. The most important thing I had to let die off was the shame of it. And so when I was able to let that die off, that confusion, that shame, that I, I that kept me mired and, and, and stupefied from fulfilling my purpose from moving forward, when I was able to let that go and latch on and cling in, in, in desperation to the spirit of the living God to to the prophetic joy and the peace and the healing and the prosperity and the provision and the purpose and the power and the prayer and the praise of who the Holy Spirit is and I had to grab onto her cloak like Ruth had to grab onto Naomi and said no you won't leave me wherever you go I will go and there I shall die beside you, that I will not live without you. I had to hold on with that same tenacity. And so as I was thinking about, you know, my life and where I'm at right now, I said, what happened? You know, I was, I, I had a great momentum started and I was moving forward in my YouTube channel and I had the vision that God had given me, the Holy Spirit had empowered me with to have this wonderful revolution, this prophetic joy revolution that was going to be a global paradigm shift all over, all over the world. What happened to that momentum? And I realized that I had turned loose of that cloak. I started studying my word a little bit less and hanging out with my boyfriend a little bit more. I started running after his vision and his plan for me instead of following in pursuit of the vision that the Holy Spirit had for me first and foremost. So I traded in his plan, um, no, God's plan for his plan. And, and that's not to blame him at all. That was within me. There was a lesson in that that I needed to learn so that why I could bring it to you because my whole being and everything I am has been made as an altar of sacrifice to give to all of the world in ministry. So my entire life and every lesson I learned is a sacrifice to give unto the world. And that is my strong belief in my purpose is that, you know, everything I go through, it has a benefit of helping someone else. And I pray that everyone else can also feel that way, you know. And so when I looked at Ruth and Boaz, there was something that jumped out at me that just made me jump out of my car and say, I had to say this right now. You know, when Ruth aligned herself with Boaz, Boaz never said, you need to come out the field and why don't you work in the house and maybe take in clothes. Why don't you come out the field and work in, uh, clean, you know, cleaning up? Or why don't you start sewing for a living? Or why don't you um, do something else for a living? Here, let me take you out of the field, which is where, you're, where, where I met you where you where you were striving in success 
where I was magnetized to your incredible integrity, where I was magnetized to your strength of character, where I was magnetized to your strength and tenacity and your vision because, oh boy, oh baby, Ruth had vision. She had to get out there in that field and pick up the scraps that even the servants didn't want. She had to go through those scraps that even the servants didn't want that the dogs were meandering through and find the nuggets left behind to feed Naomi. So she was a woman of vision, great vision, because she would see just what they needed and she would be able to gather it. And she persevered and she toiled and sweat and she was dirty and she was stank and she didn't look that pretty or look that good because later on, Naomi said, go take a bath. Put something nice on, smell good, then go down there and see him because, you know, you, you've done all the work, the hard work. And while you were in that field, he noticed you. And guess what else he did? He did not take her out of the field that she was strong in, in her lane where, she, where he was magnetized to her in the first place. He stayed there with her, the wealthiest man on the land, because that was her, his land anyway. He stayed right there with her and covered her in that field. So her vision, her plan that God had birthed within her to hold to Naomi and to work in the field and do what she knew what she was supposed to do. He stayed with her in that field, though he could have been up in the big house relaxing, right? He was the, he was the master of the field. He stayed in the field with the servants and he watched over her. He made sure he gave a word to the servants in her field to cover her, to give her extra, to give her provision. He never took her out of the field. So we have a lot of men and women, both, who get into relationships and they keep trying to change that person, trying to make that person match who they believe they should, that person should be, try to push them into having the, the kind of job that they think they should have, try to push them in a direction that they think they should go instead of covering them, leading them, guiding them in the place that God had spoke to them to be in. And you know what? That can be hard because there are some men that have to be, be prophets to gomers. And I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but there are some men that have to be prophets to women that are out there cheating on them, backstabbing and doing I don't know what. And you have to forgive them and love them and keep, keep coming back and, and, and cleaning them up. And there are some women that have to stand as that prophetess to their husbands that's battling drug addiction, to their husbands that's out there gambling and cheating and hoeing around. There are some women that have to stand in that gap. And it is hard. But if you are called to do so, if you are anointed and appointed to do so, then don't let anyone else deter you from that, from your vision of what you were called to be. But that ain't for everybody. I know it ain't for me. I ain't going <laughs> to... I ain't going to be, you know, all right, sorry about that. <laughs> My camera just keeps cutting off. But what I was saying was, no, I'm not anointed or appointed to, you know, pray in the gap <laughs> for a husband that um, has those issues in, right now because I'm not married. I'm single. So if I was married and my husband encountered those issues, oh, yes, then, then I feel completely that I would be anointed to be you know a prayer warrior and stand with him and I have done so I have stood in the gap while my husband battled addiction and was holding around and I prayed and stuff and as I prayed he execute he he ejected himself out of the house <laughs> so you know prayer can move mountains and it can change things and it may not always be to restore your marriage sometimes it may be so that he would just be vexed and say uh-uh I'm leaving because God has a better plan for you. Yes, sometimes God does have a better plan of uh, a, a different spouse for you and not necessarily the one that you're married to. That may not be for you. Doesn't mean he's an evil man or a bad man or vice versa, evil woman or bad woman. But that person just is not your God ordained spouse. And if you pray on the matter in the situation, nine times out of 10, that person is going to remove themselves. Because I've experienced that firsthand, both marriages. The minute I started praying, 
I started praying and thank you God for this godly man. Thank you that my husband is a godly man. Thank you that my husband is a prayer warrior. Thank you that my husband covers me. Thank you that my husband loves and provides and protects me. I just spoke good things and I said my husband. Now I didn't necessarily say his name um, because I you don't you don't speak and decree things over people because that is manipulation and witchcraft. But you pray and say my husband and let God do the work and decide who that husband is. Whether it's the one that's living in your house or the one that is coming. And every time I would pray and, and, and speak life and prophetic joy over who my husband is, the, 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 the impersonator that was pretending to be my God ordained husband would remove himself. And so I just, you know, I, I wanted to share that with the Ruth and Boaz because it was just, it just jumped out into my spirit, my soul, that when Boaz met Ruth, he found her in her lane, a woman of vision and strength and integrity and power. And he never sought to move her out of her lane. He never sought to move her from her strength of what she was good at and put her somewhere else where he thought she would be better at. He covered her where she was. And he loved her even though she was covered in dirt and filth and picking up scraps from the least likely and everyone talking about her you know they called her a Moabitess dog and she's a female so you can do the math what a female dog would be called today yes that's what they called her they they looked at all her past because she had been she came from a pagan country a country of witchcraft and sorcery and divination and all kinds of things and they labeled her off packed her off had no idea of the tenacity of her faith and the integrity of her spirit and her calling and mantle by God. All they did was look at her past. And I don't know about you and who I'm talking to right now, but a lot of people have been looking at your past. They have been labeling you and packaging you off and calling you all kinds of names that your mama and your daddy didn't name you and saying that you are just wrote you off and said you are no good, that you don't have a future, you'll never amount to anything. You're a loser with a big, what's that, L, okay? And God, yet God, he's your Boaz. And he looks and sees you and says, oh baby, I see your faith. I see how you held on to my spirit in the midnight hour and how you told my spirit, you cleave to my spirit, how you pray how you read your word, how you worshiped your way through all the transformation and the changes that it took to get where you are today. I see that you are seeking after my truth, that you are ready to get in the trenches, that you are out in the field digging in the dirt, even behind dogs, you don't care. You're just ready to pick up the scraps, to fight for your right to survive, to fight for your faith, that you don't care what they say. You're pushing through. So I know that you're a midwife. You're a birther of change. You're a birther and a paradigm shifter. And great is you. Great because God, I dwell within you. And so because I am great, everything you do, everything you do is going to magnetize greatness to you. And I'm going to cover you just where you're at. I don't care how dirty or filthy you are as you're digging your way out, trying to survive and come out of all that, that, that desert season, that desolation, that heartbreak, that, that, uh, losing your apartment, losing your car, um, losing your job, losing your mind, losing your, your marriage. I don't care what you have lost. I don't care the mistakes you have made. I see your tenacity to cling to my spirit, the strength in your heart, in your, in your faith towards me and, and, and my kingdom, and that you are willing to get down and dirty and work for it. And because of that, I, Hayara Bayeteke, says the Lord, am blessing you. I am blessing you with a, a, a prophetic word of joy, of peace, and abundance. This is your due season. This is your harvest. Boaz is here. 
and I am him and I am going to release the spirit of Ruth upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Not, and see what was amazing about the story of Ruth and Boaz is not only was it a love story, but it's a story of redemption because Ruth through Boaz's love and by him seeing her and covering her where she was in her lane, not trying to change her, transform her, just waiting patiently for her to transform. And that is, that to me is, is better than a Cinderella story any day. Because what is amazing about that is that Naomi said, ah, Boaz sees you. So now this is your season. Now I want you to go to the threshing floor. I want you to come out the field. See, Naomi was like the Holy Spirit leading and guiding Ruth with her vision. I want you to come out the field and I want you to go to the place of harvest where they thresh the wheat so that we can eat it. Okay. So I want you to dress. So you're going to wash off that dirt and that slime of where you were in the field digging. And I'm going to elevate to you. I'm going to give you my one of my pretty party dresses that I had left over in the back, you know, from when my husband was alive. And I'm going to put that on you. And you're going to smell good. And you're going to go down to Boaz completely transformed. But see, me and you, me and the Holy Spirit, yeah, ha, 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 yeah, my Me and the Holy Spirit, we done transformed on our own. See, we didn't need Boaz to help us transform. Yeah, Boaz covered us while we were in the process of our transformation. But I, yeah, yeah, my. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but the Holy Spirit is in the middle of your mess. The Holy Spirit is in the middle of your field season where you're digging behind them scraps and going through with the dogs and where people are calling you names and where they have discredited your reputation. The Holy Spirit Spirit is in the process of your transformation right now and the Holy Spirit is dressing you and grooming you and preparing you for the threshing floor so that she can present you at the feet of Boaz like Naomi presented Ruth at the feet of Boaz in the right time and as she lay there in her glorious transformation that he oversaw with love and with belief in her and belief in God, but was able to watch her and the Holy Spirit do the transformation when he laid there and awakened to see her beautiful transformation, he knew, aha, now it is time. I'm gonna take you as my bride and I will go and fight the enemy for you. I will fight the one that said that, that, that Satan, you know, your past, you know, all those, those people and those naysayers that, that think they have claim on you that come back from the past and see, oh, now she does. She look good now. Ooh, Ruth, Ruth done cleaned up. Wow. Oh, she got some money now. She got a good bank account now. Let me holler at her. Oh, no, no, no. You don't have no stake or claim here. I'm sorry. And that could be the IRS. That could be jobs. That could be tax. That could be anything. Oh no, that season has passed and Boaz, God is intervening and taking you for his own. Whether it's for the kingdom ministry that he is birthing through you or that new career, that entrepreneur idea that you have, you know, whatever it is, you're going to invest, uh, uh, start, start selling insurance, become a broker like I have, you know, or whatever it is, you know, God is birthing that within you. And he is right there. He is ready to fight. And when that your future mate, the one that God has ordained for you, comes into your life, he will position himself to cover you where you're at. He will, he will cover you in your strength, not try to change you and make you dress a certain way, look a certain way, be a certain way, do, do a certain kind of job, do the way he visualizes you to be. No, he will love you and see you in all your glory just as you are just as you are and he'll cover you right there and he'll say that's okay she might be in the midst of her transformation but oh she's glorious she's beautiful and when she transforms i'll know that she's ready 
And that is the key to knowing who your true mate is, but it also shows you the redemptive story of Christ and how Jesus Christ stands there in the midst and he covers us and waits for us to transform with the Holy Spirit. And that is the key. That is the key. Without the anointing of the Holy Spirit and prophetic joy, you can never do the transformation you need so that you can align yourself to be the empress, the, you know, the, the queen of the land. So how are you going to be able to step up into the lineage to become in the lineage like Ruth did? She became uh, uh, the ancestor of Jesus Christ. Here, this woman from the pagan adulterous witchcraft barren land, you know, uh, she had 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 been married before, been had. She wasn't a virgin, you know. Here she comes being pulled into the lineage of Christ, the lineage of Jesus Christ. And not only that, she marries the richest man in the land. She is married to prosperity. She is married to joy. She is married to peace. So how do we get married to that complete redemption, restoration, revolution in our life? It's through our relationship, listening, cultivating a strong relationship with the power of the Holy Spirit who speaks to us and gives us the sword, the sheath, the, the wheat carrier, the vision to see the, the wheat, the plan of action to know to get dressed and when to go to the threshing floor of the Holy Spirit. That is where the true transformation takes place. And that is where we need to put our focus is in cultivating our relationship through the Holy Spirit, uh, with the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. Not in what that man thinks we should do. Not in what your mama thinks you should do. Not in what your boss thinks you should do. You know, not even what you think you should do. But what does the Holy Spirit say? What does God say? What does the Word say? You know, how do you align your life with the Word? Are you listening to the Holy Spirit? Have you tapped into her voice? Do you even know who she is? Do you know her seven virtues? Do you know her nine gifts? Do you walk in the operation of her gifts? What have you done? What work have you done in her field to be transformed? Because in truth, it's her field that you're working, not Boaz's. All right, I love y'all to life. I hope this blesses your socks off. In the name of Jesus, I pray peace, prosperity, purpose, power, praise, and perfection over you through the power of prophetic joy. Have a blessed and God-filled day.